Hi, welcome back. It's Lionel Tech Dean and partner at Westport. And today we are talking about front end CSS and how you actually mix the code in with your HTML. Now, a couple of months ago, I brought up the topic about not using uh, Twig or some sort of front end engine, a template engine with your PHP code. And everybody blew up, the video blew up. It's one of my most popular videos. Today, what I wanna do is share with you, I have some designs that came in and I experienced it again firsthand because I was doing the design stuff myself. And I have five areas of front end where you wanna look at and actually improve so that your code is much more cleaner and you can avoid those mistakes. Now, before I go on, right, I wanna to talk to you about these issues are not really focused entirely on PHP. PHP has that value where you can actually add PHP into the HTML. Some other languages, they do not allow that. So, so that kind of skips the problem, but it does not escape the problem entirely because you're gonna see the same pattern of error actually go in there. So let's take Okay, so the first thing I wanna show you is this is my design that my designer has given me, right? And um, this is where most of the errors on the CSS actually start occurring when you go from design into the code side. So now, what I wanna show you guys, right, is that uh, this is what it looks like when he ships it over to me. And uh, one putting everything into one big file, okay? So you can see this is over 120, uh, 190 lines of code, right? And uh, before we split all this kind of stuff out, 190 uh, lines of code with uh, that is all HTML, CSS, right, is a lot of code. It's very difficult to work on the HTML. So this is the first error that a lot of newbie um, CSS design people are always talking about, right? So what you want to do, right, is this is what it looks like. And from the get-go, I can see a few things over here. Number one, I can see the this looks like it's a nice uh, something for the top header. This is the more of the left-hand column, and this is the right-hand column. So the first thing you want to do is break up the code into uh, little chunks. And this is where the PHP power comes in. This is where you're using the E2 framework. You can go ahead and you can run uh, the command called render. So just take a look how much how much code this this is. How difficult is this for anyone to work with? If I was gonna refer to you know fix the top part or fix the left column or the right column, I would have to be digging through all this amount of code every single day. So what I've done is that first I've created a render in the top bar. So this will handle the entire section over here. So. This is a little bit of difference over here. I've just done it here. This handles this. And then I've got a little card and I've got a left column and a right column. So error number one with CSS is dumping everything onto the file. Learn to break it up. And this is where you can use a render function. I know you guys uh, are aware Twig has this thing as well to render partial, but you can see so much more cleaner uh, just so much simpler when you're using the E2. Okay, the next big error that people make, right? Let's take a look at this person who dumps all these classes all over the place, okay? So I'm looking right now on my right column and I wanna work on my right column. And this is a whole stack of commands over here. We're looking at uh, view front, px border, bx4, bx weight, Every single thing has one, four, five classes. So the second big error is using too many classes. If you have a stack, uh, a CSS uh, framework, and you're using lots of stacks, then why not just create a custom CSS that just handles that? In fact, why do you even have to use the class? You can just input it on the page itself. So let's just work on this uh, on our side here, right? I've got a whole bunch of stuff over here. And to me, looking at this design, right? I look at this, this looks like a H6 or H3, and this is maybe a H6. This looks like, uh, you know, these are probably the same level. So we can get rid of all these things and then deal with them separately. So 
One of the big problems is don't use too many CSS classes. It makes the code very fat. It's unnecessary. Let's take a look at what we can do. So, okay, cause of study, right? We're looking here. I don't think you need so many of these. I think we could just go with something like a H5, you know, and we can just put that in there. Okay, H5, header 5 already has its own margins and paddings and you can customize that. You don't need to check the font, you can go and customize your own font. So this whole bunch of things just goes out the window. Okay, this whole bunch. This You don't even have to bother about this because you don't need it. You don't want to work on this. So that is all gone. And when you reload it, right? Okay, so you've got now a standard uh, thing. We can work on that. We can just customize the CSS and we can do that later. Or we can just change it to uh, something that's a little bit more closer. And then we'll work from there. So the point is I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get you guys to uh, not add so many custom classes. If you want to do this, what I like to work on uh, usually first is I start my styling over here. And later on, I will turn it into code and I say, okay, let's go H6 font weight uh, 600. Okay. And this will just change everything. So we don't want to do, we want to use the power of the, um, the code basically to just handle all this kind of stuff. All right. This is just no reason why you should be doing that. It's no reason. So let's look at my template over here. Okay, that looks pretty small and pretty, and then there's probably a little bit more gap there. Okay, no problem, we can work with that. So font size, let's make it 12 pixels and then margin top, let's give that 20 pixels. Okay, so naturally that would be a lot easier if you just were to look at it. Okay, a little bit too small, no problem. We can just work on that. 700 give me a 14 okay looking pretty close maybe a little bit bigger maybe 16 yep that looks very similar I'll get my guys to tidy up but what I've done is I've taken out so much code and I've just wrote down and all you see is a h6 so this is the second part about solving these kind of problems about writing a whole bunch of uh, CSS classes. Put it up here, leave it as clean as that with the basic, okay? Third problem, you can see it right here at this moment, right? I've actually commented it out. It's the part where everybody is screaming uh, in my previous video about putting PHP inside uh, your HTML, okay? So let's take a look more in detail of this and let me explain to you why people get so upset about this. And th this to me is one of the big problems. That's why it's point three is you can see a few things. Number one, you can see PHP inside HTML. Number two, you can see a bit of logic of the right. We see we've got a loop happening here and we have a condition happening here and then we are mixing in some a string coming in. So few things as well we've got some this is a variable that seems to be inputted into our view and this is another uh, variable that has been input into the view so i can see why people like where is item causes coming from where is cause names coming from so this is makes people so annoyed when this happens and there's a good point about it but you can avoid this entirely very simple just go into your model right so we already are importing model so if you want to clean up the uh the templating right i like to say okay let's we are taking in the model which is an instance of uh i think this is called scholarship you don't actually have to do that they can just read it back um going up to the controller but if you're in there and you're wondering about that okay so let's go into our model right and we've got the scholarship over here and what you can do right you can see they've got these commands over here that 
allow you to uh, get uh, the certain configurations and all you have to do is say okay I want let's take a look at this I want item cause as cause and uh, some sort of uh, controlling view of that let's take a look at the controller okay so you see we've got item causes he's kind of exploded this and then um, the model is actually reading that <clears throat> pop the whole of this into the model and then don't have to worry about it again okay so let's just open that so let's say we want to work on this and this one's called causes right so let's call it get causes So this is the point where I'm talking to you guys about the previous uh, video that I did <coughs> and that um, if you only know Twig and you're only working on the front end, right? You kept talking to you guys about um, that, you know, you're working with only people who work with the front end template. They don't know very much PHP and that's going to struggle to go and generate this stuff from the back end database to make it nice and clean. And this is the problem where you have so many different languages and you try to segregate and cut out the work to all kinds of different kind of people and you're gonna have to wait like if we were working in a huge team I would actually have to probably wait for this function I'll have to give some directions on the function and maybe it'll be done you know two days or three days but since we're doing this uh, with my uh, with a PHP framework I can just do it right now I can say okay public function let's call this uh, display causes okay so we have display causes and what is that gonna do we're going to basically come over here and uh, we are going to get the causes you can it's running a model and the model is from the find one so this is a bit advanced in terms of like if you're talking about the understanding the framework but i'm just giving you the idea how it's done i like to call call my variable cause a because it just tells me that's an array and then we know all the different uh the looping um functions of the view Okay, so we know that it goes through this and then it sort of, uh, what do you call, adds a diff, uh, it, it adds the, it, it's just listing it out. Okay, so one of the best things we can do is we can either apply it, or we can run the for each uh, loop onto it. I just want to check this I just running an explode of the causes so that it can go through that into a thing so we can just come over here do the same thing so since you're working in you can just you know you can clean up the variable so they're much more specific so you hit items as item <coughs> Okay, and then item is basically our ID. Uh, and then you can actually come over here. If block next, echo. Okay, so this is basically checking if there's a gap in between. So you want to be item causes next. Okay. This kind of adds that gap uh, in between. I don't like this NSB thing. I just prefer to just leave this here. Okay, so then it just sort of adds it in. So what we can do is we can just return a string s dot equals cause name. What I don't like about this one is that um, I actually prefer to use array walk. So you want to use array helper. 
this is a p um this is a e2 thing so you can do you can do whatever you want to do with that okay so i i prefer to use array helper because it's just so much easier get value from the items and item okay and then we're going to add this and then we are going to uh, add that and then basically we're gonna just going to return the s okay so let's give this a shot now all this whole thing goes away and we go model get causes or display causes okay display causes and we just want to check to make sure everything is okay cause blah 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 all right let's see whether i'll take some time to debug it but usually if i'm lucky I, there was only one mistake done instead of uh i put items i should have put cause so now i've done that and now it's displaying nicely so we've got agriculture economics down there let's take a look at my sample blah 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 so you can see this is where it appears over here much easier to do that so let's just do the bottom one <clears throat> so that it makes sense maybe we, you just have to use a p so as you can see this is so much simpler than putting all those tags over here so two things you can see i've now used a h6 i've used a p and you, sometimes you just want to like me even make it simpler here okay and this qualified thing this whole thing goes away again and we go back to h6 and we're just going to put that over here okay so when you're looking at all this stuff right you're looking at the the, the h6 all this gone gone cleaned up done easy peasy lemon squeezy so let's take a look at it on the sample so you can see it nice and aligned of course we can fix the fonts we can fix the font type we can fix the the thing but so much more cleaner and in display so this is that was the third reason uh css um, html error which is inputting lots of php logic in the template and the ways to do it 